Hi creatives, today we're going to go over how to ink a beginner's guide. Now this is my process of how I ink a drawing from beginning to finish and uh, we're just going to go over the tools that I use to do this. Now a lot of people think that you just sit down and whip out a piece of artwork and there you go, ready to go. But there's actually things that you need. First, go from step to step by the penciling to the inking and then even to the refining of a piece. So it's ready to scan or, you know, showcase on social media or wherever you want to put it. But first you need to know the paper. Now paper is very important. You have many different types. And this one here that I use quite often is a smaller piece of paper. It's a thin tone paper that handles ink and pencil very well. It's a little bit textured and I enjoy it for just getting my ideas out on there and moving on to the next one. Now you have the normal piece of paper, that's kind of the A4 letter size, smooth white paper. This is really good for really building out a piece of drawing to scan in or get a lot of information on a page. You know, everyone uses this. And then you have smooth watercolor paper. It's durable and it's really good for drawing with pencil and then holding ink really well without a bleed, as well as applying watercolor or gouache to it later. And then you can even apply more ink after that. It's fantastic strong paper. Next, we have a more specialized paper. It's a little bit larger. It's an eight and a half by 12 inch paper uh, used for comic books. I love it because it handles pencil really well and erases well, but then it handles ink beautifully. It's very smooth. You can get a lot of room for detail. Yeah, it's kind of my go-to for bigger pieces. Now, when you create a drawing, you want to think about the end result of what you want it to feel and look like. I love this thin tone paper because it allows the ink to be a little bit softer. It handles pencil really well, and it kind of feels like it's already been aged a little bit. In a lot of my artwork, I want it to feel aged and kind of classical and um, give that vibe of something created long ago. Now, the smaller paper makes me feel less discouraged about filling the whole page and helps me really see the whole picture easier, but it does tear a little bit easier, so you have to be careful when you erase. For the smooth white paper, uh, the A4 letter size, the 11 by 8 or uh, sizes that go into the printer, these are really good for just really pulling out all the details and getting in there. It takes pencil well and also really good for all types of pens where it just it doesn't really bleed much and you can sketch all different styles on it. I really enjoy building up smaller comic book pages on it as well as, you know, showing things on my live stream with this kind of paper. And it fits into the scanner perfectly. This way you can send it to your computer or your iPad ready for post and editing, whichever you need. Now if you don't have a scanner, you can use a camera, but don't shoot at an angle. Shoot from straight above, make sure you don't have any lens distortion. Now you can also use your phone, just make sure you have the high megapixel and if there's no glares of light coming in there, please clean your lens. And once it's in there and once you've uh, scanned in your drawing, you can take it into your editing Photoshop or iPad or whatever and start really coloring it in or detailing it, however you feel, which I do with a lot of my different drawings to really give it some, you know, vibrancy. Um, but A4 paper, it's go-to paper for me. And you can get toned, you can get all white, you can get um, all different types. And they really just, it's a good size to build out your drawings. Now, for the smooth watercolor paper, this pencil holds really well here for this. And then I can erase it and apply an ink on top of that. And the ink won't bleed. It'll look beautiful. Um, it's just a little bit pricier than all the other papers, you know. Uh, but it's going to be well worth drawing on because if you ever need to color it you can do it right then and there as you can see here here's an anime akira that i did and i was able to ink over and really darken the lines that i watercolored over it gives a lot of room to work with and you can even use prisma colors or any kind of other pencils to really uh, apply to this kind of paper now with comic book paper it's one of the smoother papers you're going to use it has uh, the ability to handle pencil very well as well as erase really really cleanly so that you can apply any kind of inking on top of that and not really have to worry. It's also durable enough not to be torn when you erase it. I use it for any kind of major project where I need to do a cover or a poster of any kind. Now my current project I'm working on an 11 by 14 tone paper because it already gives that age vibe. But I highly recommend you guys try all types of different type, types of paper. That way you can understand what you're looking for and what you want to do. But let's talk about pencils. All right. Now, when I'm doing the ink drawing, I have two go-to pencils. My mechanical pencil HB, 
which is a fantastic pencil that's very precise and you don't have to sharpen. It allows me to get into these fine details in any kind of drawing, in any kind of paper, as well as let me shade a little bit and uh, build out the different contrasts. But it doesn't have enough to it to build a real dark dark, and that's when I go to my 2B pencil, which allows me to have a lot wider range of shading, and it's a lot softer, so I can actually build in some realism if I need to, and I can sharpen it if I want a more precise and uh, sharper edges. But I use it for a lot of my drawings um, that need to have a lot more contrast to it and get those darker lead colors before I apply the ink. So let's talk about erasers. The two erasers that I use are the kneaded eraser. This one's really good because you can mold it and erase uh, the top layer of lead that is on top. And then you have the rubber eraser, which is great for per precision kind of erasing. But usually I use the kneaded one because it gives me the results that I'm looking for in most of my drawings. Now let's talk about pens, the pens that I use for my inking. Tons of pens, Pilot Razor Point 2 pen. Now this really doesn't matter. This is just a pen that I like uh, for sketching and drawing. It has a rough look to it. It bleeds a little bit. It's really just a sketching pen. Then you want to use something a little bit precise, like the Micron 005. Now this is very small, and I can get a lot of detail into a lot of my pieces of artwork. But if you want to go even smaller, I use the Copic 003. Now this thing is tiny. I can get all kinds of detail with that. The brush pen is going to be used for filling in a lot of space coloring in, even allowing some pressure so you can, you know, have thin strokes as well as thick strokes all in one go. And this is a really good pen that a lot of comic book artists use and different people. Now for the dip pen, which you saw earlier, this one is a little bit more technical. You have to get the ink. You have different sizes of dip pens you can use. And it takes a little bit of practice because these tips can get damaged or you have to take care of them, you have to wipe them clean. You can even sand them down to get them back to their smoothness. Now there's tons of different types of ink. I'm using a Deleter Black. This one has a little bit of a shine to it, something that's not always uh, enjoyable to some artists. There's matte ones and different brands. So def definitely test those out and test out the different tips because they can be thick or thin and apply different styles. Now that we've addressed the paper, the pencils, the erasers, and the pens to use, uh, there's tons of different things that you can use to uh, get your creative style to where you want it. So I really encourage you to explore and try out different uh, utensils and tools to create the art that you want. These are just some of the things that I enjoy. There are tons of things you can do with the iPad or the computer that will make your images that much better. So definitely try out everything that you can and see how far you can actually take your art. Okay, so that was the process that I do to ink my drawings. From the paper, to the pencil, to the eraser, to the ink. Everything you need to know what I use, even the process of scanning it in and getting it into the uh, iPad or the computer, or whatever I need to do to post edit it. Now, if you found this information uh, helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel, but also you can support me on my Patreon, which I'll leave the link down below in the description. If you want to find a community of artists that want to support and encourage each other, please join my Discord. I'll leave the link down below as well. And, you know, hey, I have a Monday through Friday live stream I do every single week where I get on around 9 p.m. Pacific time and we just draw for about an hour and a half and we doodle and we do all kinds of different art projects. And it's a great place to learn and meet other artists and really grow in your artistic skill. So I highly recommend you join that. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you're creative, go create. And I will see you guys next time.